Grant here with 4MathTeachers.com. On today's video, we're going to be talking about scavenger hunts and the way that you can use those to really get your kids engaged in the classroom. When kids are up moving around, things are good. Things are really, really good. Now, when kids are up moving around, you have to be okay with a little bit more noise. And as long as it's not too noisy, though, you will love this activity. What you do is you'll take these different uh, cards here, and you can make your own here. But I do have several that I'll list in the link below this video and you can go check them out. But this is an example of a scavenger hunt for a one-step equation review. So I've taught one-step equations, the next day I need some review, and so I'm gonna paste these around the room. I'm gonna hang them up on walls behind, uh, you know, on the back of chairs, maybe in the hallway if my administration lets me. And I'm gonna say everyone go to a different problem on the wall. Okay, so that's where they'll start. Now if you have more than 15 kids, I have 15 different stations here, so if you have more than 15, You'd have to double up, but you get the idea. You want kids spread apart. The kid will solve the problem down here. So they would solve negative x, negative 9x equals negative 9. We know that x equals 1. So they would look for the card that has x equals 1. And when they get to x equals 1, they'll say, oh, this is the next problem to solve. And they solve this problem. Now, of course, you won't want to put these right next to each other on the walls. Maybe this is on that side of the room and this card is on that side of the room so that they're up and moving around looking for the next problem to solve it's amazing some of the kids that you have the hardest time getting to do math problems they want to do it because they're trying to get to the end it's a scavenger hunt that word hunt is magical so they'll solve this next problem of course x divided by 3 equals 11 well x would be 33 and so they come to this problem and keep solving you would solve until you get back to the problem that you started with You'll know you've done it right when you've, get, when you've gotten all the way back to where you started. You, would have, you will have completed the scavenger hunt, the mathematical scavenger hunt. Now, sometimes what happens is kids do a problem wrong and they skip over stations. That's not good. And so you'll want to tell the kids, if you get to the problem that you started on and you haven't done 15 problems, you've done something wrong. And as a teacher, I've included some answer keys here that just allow you to see the progression. And so maybe a kid starts at one. All right, well, he's, he's gonna go this way and he's gonna get all the way to 50 and he's gonna go to back to three. He's going to follow this progression. And so no matter what station a, st a student has started on, you can easily see where they should be going next. It's fast, it allows you quick um, ability to see where students are and students are checking themselves because if they can't find an answer around the room, odds are they've done it wrong. And so they've got self-check going on. They're moving. You have an easy way to uh, get kids going back in the right direction. It's a great thing for you. I encourage you to use scavenger hunts in your classroom. Again, below I will include uh, this particular problem set and uh, several others. You can use this not just for solving equations, but fractions and integers. You can make your own. They're really easy and they're a blast to use. Enjoy.